let's see. Everything's everything's going. We got uh, Mr. Robert Molesky from Millie's Pizza in the Pan in the studio. Um, truly a pleasure. Thanks for spending the time. The morning. I no, appreciate a, you it's having a me. Beautiful Sunday. Not Sunday. Monday feels like yeah, a Sunday. Monday. Yeah. Um, the last couple of days have been really beautiful. This is like for most people probably ideal summertime weather. It's kind of that in between between summer and fall like yeah you might be able to throw a hoodie on in the evening type fall's gonna to, be right <laughs> around the corner yeah i was kind of over the heat it was yeah pretty intense for a while yep yep um mm-hmm. so i i don't make it up to uptown too often um but one of the last times i was up there was to visit your shop and uh your team took great care of us i was actually a little concerned about um getting a seat yeah. And we, we, we had one of the later um, pre-orders and I was like, are we going to eat this on the curb? Like, what, like yeah. where are we going to eat this? Um, and luckily we were the only ones in the shop and people were coming and going to pick up their orders. But uh, the team took great care of us. They kept checking in on us and, you know, and, and I, uh, it was really cool to be able to taste what everyone's been raving about. Yeah. Yeah, they do a great job over there. Without them, I certainly yeah, couldn't they, they do what I do. Yeah, they said you were you were know? ensuring the second location yeah, was, I'm was doing, you know a, right now. We opened the Berwyn one about three months ago, so I'm okay. there every day. Yeah, yeah. And I'm making every single pizza out there. I just want to make sure we get off to a good start. But. Sure. Um, and I'm I'm kind of feeling that as well as the team continues to grow, and I'm doing less and less teaching. How do we maintain that consistency? Yeah. Um, one thing, so the I think what stood out to us uh, were were the flavors and the sauces, and the ingredients seem so pure. Um, but I'm sh- I don't know if you've heard this before. It felt I don't know if soupy uh, like an, an exaggeration. Yeah, we use a lot of sauce. It, do you, <laughs> I wonder if it was wet from the tomatoes? Yeah, and it could be from you know we use raw vegetables and okay, so sometimes Some, more, and, more or less water content. Yeah, actually we put out raw mushrooms if you had that. I don't know, but ha- have you heard you know, it releases water? People ask for extra like well done or anything like oh, that all the time. Yeah. Shit, yeah. I, next time. <laughs> yeah, but I mean Danny over there, he's the guy making the pizzas yeah. he does most of them pretty well yeah done. It, well I, okay so but i mean it really does depend on the day if you're going sure, on a day sure. where it's really hot out the dough is going to rise and it's going to get a lot thicker okay so it takes a lot longer to cook well to be one honest, of the so. last um reels that uh, i saw on the page after they cut it i'm like i did not get i, I yeah. didn't get that crunch and yeah. i'm like uh, we were so if if that was the case i'll ask for well done next time yeah and uh i, I pizza goes through like a thing where it comes out of the oven then it's super crispy yeah and then a few minutes later it'll start to fade to okay. soggy but then okay it'll start to firm up after like 10 or 15 minutes okay so it's okay. like all pizzas kind of do that so. well it's it's a hidden gem in argyle yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh if you were to uh, take us back in time uh, to a time before pizza, maybe a time before hospitality. Um, how did you, I think on Steve's podcast, uh, you mentioned you were a financial advisor yeah, um, for State Farm. And like, can you think of a time when you started um, thinking about what you might want to do? Oh, I mean, I knew from maybe eight years old that I wanted to be in the restaurant industry because- okay. Growing up, I never really watched cartoons or anything like that. I was always watching cooking shows. Okay, okay. Uh, like Yan Can yeah, Cook. My mom would put that on. Uh, yeah, Fergal yeah. Gourmet. Okay. Things like that. I always was <laughs> way more fascinated. Julia Childs. So, and what a what about it? Was I, it I was it know. the talking? Was it the actual production? Was it the showmanship? Was it sharing some of your passions and something that's tangible and consumed sometimes immediately in front of you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, who doesn't love food right. and it was just love watching the techniques that they were using, make, producing the products and sure, walking sure, you through sure. the process. So sure. So I just always found it fascinating, but well, I guess what were some of your early mem- memories, earliest memories of maybe cooking or being yeah, in the kitchen? I mean, uh, every Sunday morning I would draw, I would go downstairs at maybe eight years old draw up a menu for my brothers and sisters i would have three items on there <laughs> to cook very simple items so they'd come down and then they would check a box no which way. which item they wanted me to make and i would stand on a stool okay in front of the oven and make them oh, breakfast wow. <laughs> so 
how is um, grocery shopping for you? Like, would you go with your with your whoever's doing the I grocery mean, shopping? I mean, to be honest like, with you, my mom didn't really cook that much. Oh, yeah. So, so do kind of did you take, yeah, I didn't, take I the mean, helm? My grandmother was the one who cooked, but <laughs> oh, and is we this, would see is her this the again. Millie? Yeah, it's Millie. So <laughs> when we would go visit her a couple times a year, she was always in the kitchen, and I was always spending time just watching her cook and helping her. Was uh, Grandma abroad, or were they in the Chicago land area? St. Charles. St. Charles. Okay. Yeah. And you were in North Shore. Yeah, Winnetka. Oh, Winnetka. Okay, yeah. nice, yep. nice. So. Wow. Yeah. Um, she was always cooking everything from scratch, so she kind of grew my passion. I would always help her yeah. make things. So, uh, What were some of the things that you would make together? Like pierogies, oh, wow. mashed potatoes. She yeah. had the best mashed potatoes. Very simple dishes. Polish food's pretty simple. So. Okay, okay. Yeah, she came from Poland, so. And then when it came time to school, did you, do you have like extracurriculars like home ec? Oh yeah. 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 I took home ec in high school, but you know, I never really thought I always wanted to open a restaurant that was always in the back of my mind. And for some reason I was obsessed with opening a hot dog stand. Yeah. (laughs) I I I love a good, good in case meat. (laughs) It's like, if I can just open a small hot dog stand, pay my bills, I'd be totally content. Have you, have you visited, um, I've been on a red light chicken kick. Have you visited red light chicken no. in Lincoln Park? No, I haven't. They, it's, uh, it used to be Devil Dogs in by the DePaul area. Okay. And I've been going probably like twice a week. If oh, not wow. Some, yeah, so it, and it's out of the way. It's like maybe a 25 minute drive from here. And like you said, something as simple as a chicken sandwich or a hot dog. Yeah. Um, have you been to uh, Jim's Polish's? No, I haven't. Right, I mean, right off the expressway. I know about it. It's okay. incredibly legendary. Well, they, so... Jim's original, yeah. Hate to ad- not hate to admit it, but like I guess guilty pleasure of like that's probably a weekly thing as well. Oh, okay. And I tried to stop by during their seventy fifth anniversary. Lines both ways around the block for a. I think they they were giving it at a discount, but it's it's just like I'll come back, I'll pay the five dollars for my for my Polish on another. Yeah, day, I mean but... I love Super Dogs. Yeah, that's kind of my go to spot. So, okay, yeah. okay. Um, so then. Hot dog. But How it, did you it never from, like it never occurred to me to go to, for opening a restaurant. So I kind of went down, tried to take the traditional route and the jobs and get a safe job. And well, yeah. yeah. So I and I can relate to that. Like, what were who were some formative uh, advisors or mentors or role models that pointed you in the direction of the safe bet versus entrepreneurship at well, an I earlier mean, time? Going to high school, yeah. the counselors and everything. Okay. Were like. You know, so I I just thought that was the best way to go, but I did you, quickly so, found out that it was not for me. Did you do college? Uh, no, no I college. Well, I mean, I did some community college. Yeah, and, and for a couple so is of it years. is it gen eds or, or were you trying? Yeah, I was to, just doing the gen ed stuff and, and, and some. It's, it's a common like when I go to career fairs in high schools, like it's it's almost frustrating that the students in the room aren't paying attention. But I try to remind myself that. I probably wouldn't be paying attention. And so I would consider myself a late bloomer in the sense of like when I first started intentionally thinking about where my source of fulfillment could come from rather than just floating on by. Yeah. Um, and so after, so when, when college didn't work out, what were the next steps? Then? I mean, I was absolutely terrible at school. Yeah. I mean, especially in high school. I mean, I barely graduated. Okay. You know, I have attention deficit disorder okay. so, and OCD. So, you know, I struggled in school. Yeah. Very well, difficult where where did me. you find your attention gravitating towards at that Just time? Just anything related to like art. You know, okay. I had, I definitely don't have like that math, mathematical mind or, yeah. you know, so I don't know, creative. Okay. That's what I okay. so, always found myself being drawn to something creative. So at that time, what were you working on then? What were you thinking about? What were you, you know, creative is kind of nebulous. So like, yeah, what, I mean, what were you during, doing? during uh, college, I was just working temp jobs and okay. had a couple offers from corporate jobs. I was working at a medical lab facility, just yeah. doing paperwork. And, you know, I eventually fell into doing the financial advising. Uh, can you describe what, what was the family dynamic? Like, what did your parents do, and what did the siblings do? And are you where are you in the sibling? I'm the youngest. You're the youngest, yeah, so you had people. To, you, had, you had siblings to look up to. Hey, what you said? What did you, you say? Yeah, eight kids. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I'm adopted. Oh, okay. Yeah, so but you still had role. You had role models. Yeah, the yeah, family. yeah. They're okay. all older than me, and okay. most of them were out of the house by the time. Okay. So I just have basically my brother and my sister. 
my brother went off to the military, joined the Marine Corps. Okay. He was in there for 23 years. And there I was believe. no part of you that was like, I'm going to. Well, no, there was. Oh, there I mean, was. I was okay. actually really enticed by doing it. I went to the went to the Marine Corps office and when I was about to sign up. My brother just said, <laughs> my brother's like, don't do it. He's like, oh, he's like, I don't think you're cut out for this. You know, I think this wouldn't be a good fit. For and you, was that so. enough to, to yeah. deter you? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't do that. And then just decided to kind of lull around in community college until I found my niche. And then I fell into the financial advising and it just was not for me. I was not good. How, at it. how does one fall into it? I don't like, know. What, I just what, saw, what I, just saw, I always was interested in like the stock market and investing. Sure, sure, sure. And that was one of my first jobs. I worked in Lake Forest. I worked at a commodities trading firm. Oh. So I did that for a couple of years. Oh, and wow. then, you know, I decided to go pursue my Series 6 license. Oh, and, yeah. You know, so I got all that and then got a job at State Farm did, after that. Did you ever want to move downtown and do that stuff? No, I was working out in Libertyville. Oh, wow. So, okay. And then I eventually got a job at State Farm and that was out in Gurney. Uh, I was living with my sister. She lived in Gurney. So I was living with her for a little bit. Yeah. And, so. and as a advisor and planner, is it difficult to get started to build momentum? Um, for sure. To build a yeah. clientele yeah. And, and to truly appreciate what you're selling maybe yeah i mean i didn't understand at the time really what i was selling i have a much better appreciation now of it you yeah. know but because they can be helpful yeah when I, you're in your early 20s and you're trying to convince people to buy life insurance it's yeah. you know i don't know you, it, it was difficult for me and then the expectation is to be cold calling friends and family right and it's a little right, embarrassing right, right asking right. them for money it's, and it's really hard to get your you know, the meeting set up and everything. So okay, I did it for like three years, though. And okay. I've, At, and, and what was that point where you're like, I need to find something else? Well, I was let go from the job. Okay. Because I wasn't meeting expectations. So. Okay. I don't know. I was at a job. We was going every day. I was going to this office where they, like a job center. Okay. You know, to search for jobs and stuff. And the lady's like, you seem really bad. And I don't know, we had a conversation. Kind of, kind I was like, like head, well, head what should I do? Head. And she, yeah, and she was like, and I we started talking about food randomly. And she's like, you seem really passionate there about you go. food. There you go. So I was like, she's like, have you ever thought about going to culinary school? So oh, that's okay. when I applied to Kendall College. Very cool. Uh, yeah. One and of I, the, yeah. Yeah. And I, I was at Kendall when it was actually in Evanston. And it I later moved that. to downtown. I didn't yeah. know that. So, I was there one semester in Evanston. And then it moved downtown. What my, my buddy that I went to uh, your shop with probably did one, maybe two semesters at Kendall. And okay. then he was like, I can't keep dicing carrots like this. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, it's just they start you with something the you got to do. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I didn't know Kendall had a location in Evanston. Did, yeah. you, did you complete Kendall? Yeah, I did wow. the two years there. Which is something I, I don't hear too often. Yeah. And that's something you've noticed as well? People just not finishing? Yeah, I mean, it, first of all, it's incredibly expensive, and yeah, yeah it is a lot of time. Yeah, and, and what was the value that you saw in order to complete it, like to take well, it all the way to Well, I had some really good mentorship from oh. some really amazing chefs, you know. Okay. And But I actually, going to culinary school, I fell in love with the front of the house, you know, because there was a class. Okay. We, there's a restaurant at Kendall. Okay. And, you know you're supposed to have students being waiters and doing the front of the house. And then you have the kitchen aspect yeah. where there's the students making the food. So you have regular people coming into this restaurant. It's like to get actual experience. But is it still good? Like it's, it's, yeah, oh yeah, it's, still it's available thing. right now yeah, to go to that yeah. restaurant. But the thing was, is that they didn't have enough students to, to fill mm -hmm. the class for the front of the house. So they were like, Hey, if anyone's interested in making fifteen dollars an hour plus tips, oh, so now they're paying. You know, and I didn't have a job at the time. I'm like, this will help me with school, so I jumped on the chance at that. So, oh sure, I started waiting tables, and they and they didn't have enough students for like several semesters. So I was like, they're almost doing that for a year, and it okay. was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do the front of the house when I graduate culinary school. So I immediately oh, got wow. a job waiting tables. Okay, um, can you share some of the experiences in the front of house that that you that you liked that you enjoyed i mean i really loved interacting with people i'm not going to say i was the best waiter yeah because yeah. you know i'm if i'm not very i don't converse very much mm -hmm. but if they want to ask me questions i'm certainly willing 
to answering questions. Well, you're definitely but, put in a position to answer questions. Yeah. <laughs> and you get to describe the food, you know, yeah, be very yeah. descriptive. And, you know, if you're passionate about food, it's easy to sell that product, you know, right, it's something right. you believe in. Right. So, you know, and interacting with guests, you, I learned so much from, from waiting on tables, just how to take care of people, mm, you know, mm. you know, I thought, I thought I was just going through the motions, but when I actually opened my restaurant, I was like, wow, I really did learn a lot from, from waiting on tables. And I did it for 16 years. I kind of fell. Yeah. I don't know. I've just like fell into it and just stayed for, I think too long, you know, (laughs) (laughs) into waiting tables. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I mean, I think prior to this podcast and I think some of the general public still feel like waiting tables is a high school job. Yeah. And, and, but like, I know, I don't know if lifers is a derogatory term, but like people that you are professionals at it. Oh yeah, for sure. And they, and they do make a living. Yeah. I mean, I worked at higher end places, so, you know, we did have a lot of lifers in there and I was actually, people would call me a lifer and. But I, I guess, um, do you notice a distinction between someone who does it casually versus someone who has, has become a professional? I yeah. think so for sure. Yeah, I mean, I still have friends that still wait tables. You yeah, know? yeah, and they're just amazing at their job. You know, I wish I yeah. was half the server they were, but yeah, I well, just wasn't. Well, there's something to be said about taking the time to let, let's say you have, you have regulars and you just like know you get to know people by name and not just that, but you get to learn about their family, their life, their jobs. and, and Yeah, you, I mean, I have a one friend, she was still waiting tables. She sits down at the table with oh, the wow. customers and has, like, they're her regulars, you know. They just love her. You right, know? So, right. Yeah. Uh, so what happened, at, you said six years? Like, what happened? 16 six, years. 16 years. What yeah. happened after 16? Like, when did it feel time to move on? Well, March 17th rolled around, and... They approached uh, uh, us. There was three of us working that day. Of 2020. Incre- yeah. Oh. Incredibly slow. They said, hey, corporates decided that we're going to shut down for a couple of weeks because of COVID. Sure. So this is going to be your last shift working, and we'll contact you when we're ready to reopen and come back. So oh, wow. I went home that day, and I was excited. I was like, this is a vacation. Okay. <laughs> Get a couple of weeks <laughs> off from work. You was, know? There, was there any conversation about unemployment? Well, I mean, there was, I think there were those benefits. I applied for that immediately. I don't. Okay. Yeah. I but, can't remember but what like, it was where, like, where is my source of yeah, income going to be coming from? Yeah, I think they were paying like from? half for a couple of weeks, but yeah. that quickly ended. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was, was at that time. It was like, we didn't know how long this was going to last. It was a huge corporate corporation, so they couldn't afford to. Okay, so loss. so immediately in the acute setting, it's like a relief, a respite, a vacation. Yeah. When things started to settle, what were some of the thoughts? Yeah, I mean, then? after a couple of months it started passing, I'm like, wow, this is pretty serious. <laughs> and obviously, as we all know, yeah, yeah, it changed everything. Right. So, right. you know, I found myself kind of bored at home, and I was like, and I had already been making pizza prior to this. It was kind of just in the for back. yourself. Yeah, it was in the back of my mind that yeah, I would. I'm really loving. I love pizza, and I yeah. want to maybe open a pizza place. So yeah. I was like, I'm sitting at home. I have nothing to do. I started making pizzas at home just for me and my wife to consume. Okay, and just started taking pictures of them, posting them to Facebook, and then people would start DMing me. It looks amazing. Do you think I can get one? So I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I mean, I would make the pizza. I bought little pizza boxes oh, wow. box them up i would literally drive them to another person's house and just drop them off on the porch so okay. it was contactless and then they would venmo me some money to cover the food cost and it started becoming like almost an everyday thing so so, so the uh reactions were positive yeah very yeah. cool uh at that time was it would you is it still deep pan pizzas same pizza same that I'm making pizzas. Now. Yeah. this is the only pizza i know how to make <laughs> if you were to ask me to make like a New York style pizza, I don't think I could do it. Like, well, I, I saw. I only know I, how to I, make one style uh, of pizza. I heard that, that you got help from from Derek uh, as well yeah, as uh, yeah. Tony Gemignani. Yeah, he kind of got it. Tony okay. G. Yeah, uh, been amazing mentors. Derek was the first one that. Oh. So after that, I decided to. I wanted to open a brick and mortar. Yeah. 
and I didn't realize the cost associated with it and getting a business sure, loan. Sure. I had no idea that getting a business loan was next to impossible for someone who's... It's a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> so I clearly didn't have the money for that. So I started looking at other avenues and right. came across the ghost kitchen avenue. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, is that... Is that I, if we've seen a lot of startups start there. Yeah. Right. And how long were you there for a year? Or year and a half. A year and a half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Found it. Found one in uh, Humble Park. Yeah. Logan Square. Okay. Right on the border there. Wait, was that six oh six and Vision Unlimited? Oh, okay, okay. So not not near um, Professor Pizza when Professor Pizza was in Humble. Close. I mean, Cl- close enough. But okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah. So you know, I gotcha. found that route. Very cool. A lot less expensive to start up. You just need to buy. Yeah, so I guess uh, now I'm thinking about how you well know, I, I worked with funeral potatoes. No, yeah, 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 we worked in the same kitchen. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. I think they're getting a brick and mortar, or yeah, they, they're, 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 they're doing, sharing a space yeah, right now. Yeah, they're sharing a space. Yeah, oh, good, I, but yeah, good so we kind of oh, they were there before cool. I started. So okay, yeah. So when you started delivering, personally delivering, as well as doing the ghost kitchen, and and that's is it pickup and delivery only at the ghost kitchen? Uh, it was when just you, pickup. You, just okay. Well, yeah, actually, we yeah, I did do delivery through DoorDash. Did you yeah. um, notice? Because going back to my like initial comment of like, does it how how does pizza travel? Um, what what are some things that you learned along the way to like to maintain the quality of your your pizza from from production to consumption? Yeah, I mean it's it's still pretty rough with yeah. the delivery, especially we do everything through DoorDash. The way that they handle the and pizza, outside of your they, control. they don't care. Oh my god! You know, so I get a lot of messages saying our pizza came pretty trash, but it's very hard to control a pizza once it's in the box with yeah. all the steam and everything. So I always do recommend that it's dine-in, but yes. you know, I do think. With my pizza, I think it's better the next day, to be honest with you. As I, As I think some yeah. would agree, all pizza is yeah. better the next yeah. day. Yeah. Especially on the cold. reheat, you know? <laughs> so. uh, did you, have you had um, Five Squared? Oh, yeah. Steve uh, Kaplan's one of my best best buds. Well, I mean, what industry. do you think about that model, where you just heat it up yeah, at home? Yeah, I mean, I love that idea. Is that know? now, is that more in your control to provide the instructions to the consumer to actually reheat it on their own? Or is that still leaving more out of your control, more so than DoorDash, though? Yeah, well, I mean, I think with Five Square, they do a phenomenal job. Yeah. You know, so their product speaks for itself. Right, so. right, right. And But it's like you want, like, you want the food to speak for itself, and it doesn't if it doesn't travel well. Yeah. And that's frustrating. Yes. And so I'm, I'm want, like, I wonder if, like, I wonder if, Regular consumers' ovens can do the same job as what, you know, a pizza Yeah, oven. well, I mean, you would have to have some, uh, like maybe like a pizza steel or oh, something okay, to, okay. to get that bottom really crispy. You know what I personally do? What? I put it in the air fryer. Okay. I think that's the best way to yeah. reheat the pizza. Yeah, I agree. I mean, every every time I bring a pizza home, the next day I'll pop it in the What air if you fryer. had a... Uh, cast iron. Is yeah, it some, you like, can do a cast iron okay. with some olive oil on there. It's okay. an amazing reheat as well. Okay, okay. You get a nice, firm, crispy bottom. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, walk me through, I guess we didn't even talk about your, your inspiration. Like, when was the first time, you've mentioned Barnaby's as well as um, Burt Katz. Like, yeah. when were the first moments or interactions with those places that, yeah. that brought you a lot of inspiration? Like, I, was, I wasn't I was really passionate about pizza, okay. to be honest with you. I only knew about, like, Barnaby's, Lou Malnati's, places yeah. like that. Right. So, when I went to Burt's place, randomly, I don't know, even know why we chose to go there. I had never even seen a pizza like that with the caramelized crust. Like I didn't know anything about Detroit pizza or anything. So mm, mm, mm. I was like, what is this? Mm. I was like, this is insane. So how did you land there? I just <laughs> randomly chose to go there. I, I only heard I, think of- I saw him on Anthony Bourdain. I was like, oh, oh let's go check that place okay. out. You okay. Know? I, I only and, heard about birds through Pequons. Oh yeah, right. And then I didn't yeah. even know about a place called Gulliver's. Like I, yeah, I Gulliver's. went through a YouTube down rabbit hole. Like, of, and then he had another one called the Inferno in Evanston. Uh, didn't prior did not, to that. Did yeah, not hear that. Yeah, well, he seems like a really chill dude. Yeah, he passed away actually, <laughs> yeah. And, but yeah, he was a very interesting guy. It's not just Italians that make good yeah. good pizza. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I mean, I wanted to learn how to make that style of pizza okay so okay. i dedicated myself to figuring it out but going but, on blogs okay okay looking on the internet 
Yeah. YouTube, you know. Did you have Barnaby's prior? Like, what were your what were your first moments with pizza? Yeah, definitely Barnaby's. Barnaby's? Yeah, for sure. And would that be described as tavern style? Yeah, tavern style. Okay. Pizza. And it has a crimped edge cornmeal crust. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I got it a few weeks ago. I just love that pizza. It's a good go-to. And I love Lou Malnati's, too. That's what I grew up. There's a time for all kinds of pizza. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if, you know... Derek was probably the first one. I don't know if he was the first to do it, um, to introduce Detroit style to Chicago. I think he was one of them. That's what I know him as. And uh, and Detroit style holds a a special place in my my heart. Yeah, I mean, I could never make a pizza as good as he does. That that (laughs) dough he makes, I don't even know how. It's like so airy and yes, light. Yes, <laughs> uh, well, and what about what about the focaccia style of Professor Pizza? Yeah, I haven't tried. Prof- Ooh, I, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. We were at, I was at a Pizza Expo and he made a pizza. He was competing and I did try that. It was incredible. But yeah, I haven't tried all his styles. But yeah. definitely well, one of the best when, pizza makers in Chicago. When someone, let's say a tourist, is going to be in town for a couple of days and they're asking around, you know, what should I try as far as pizza? It's a very hard, like it's not just deep dish. Yeah. I mean, we have so many different styles. Another mentor of mine is Jonathan Goldsmith. He has okay. Spock and Napoli. Oh my God. And he, yeah, he makes, you know, Neapolitan style yeah. pizza, which I think uh, one of our favorites. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. Robert's pizza and dough mm-hmm. company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's so many amazing pizza makers in the city so many different styles yeah yeah Yeah. but i wanted to take this one particular style and just focus all my energy on that um if you were to to pick maybe one aspect was it the caramelized crust or like what 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 really was the caramelized crust yeah i never i thought it was burnt like what this pizza looks burned to me and when i tasted it i was like wow and i i really and this isn't like a knock or a pushback but like is there something about Bert's that you felt like you can like add to the conversation that Bert wasn't already doing. I just thought maybe I could put my own unique spin on it. Okay. So that's what I aim to do. Yeah. And our pizzas are nothing alike, to be honest right, with right. you. I mean, we share a caramelized crust, but that's probably where it ends. Okay. Okay. You know? Yeah. And it's round, <laughs> which I feel Wait, like was was Bert's rectangular. No, no, no. It, we both make round. Right, okay, yeah, he, okay. He made it in the round, but, you know, with Detroit, it's square. Square, yeah. You know, always in a square pan, so. Yeah. Which I think it's incredibly hard to stretch a dough into a square from a round, you know, ball ball dough. Can't so. say I've tried, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to hear conversations between, like, you and Derek, or, like, if you guys ever wanted to come on, yeah, or yeah. just borrow the equipment and yeah. just, like, chat it up. Yeah, um, I mean, you'll... Spock, yeah, we tried. We tried doing them. that. Like we have four mics going, we could probably get a round table <laughs> yeah, with yeah. whoever you wanted. <laughs> um, Peace Pizza, Spock. Yeah. Um, I think that'd be a very interesting conversation. Yeah, the list goes on and on. Uh, so then, how? Um, when, once you got the business license, like how? How did everything? Did everything just fall into place? Like was it like go time? Like it? Like the the gates are open now. It's just like take off yeah it took a while to get the license because oh, it was okay. covid and you have to get a manager sanitation certificate oh. which you have to do in person oh and they kept canceling the class it was oh. once a month and they'd be like oh there's not enough we can't get enough people we're going to cancel so it was like push back me i couldn't get my license without that certificate so that took I like see. three months to get and then i didn't really realize i waited till the last minute to order the pans and i didn't know they took like three months they like custom make them so i had wow. pushed that back a little bit further because i need a bunch of them um and, then, and this was 2021 2020 still. 2020 yeah uh what part of you felt confident enough to try for this in the pandemic i just thought i was making a, a good product you yeah. know and, and I just thought why not try and give it a try you know oh, it was d- something does, i want to do and yes i think i was too too dumb to realize to, that i was that i could possibly fail i don't know well, despite all the restaurants that are closing yeah i just That's i don't know so I, interesting i just took the leap i didn't even right. really think about failing to be honest with you what what part does your wife play in this oh she's incredible without her none of this would be possible she is uh, my rock like yeah. even to this day yeah. you know i when i'm feeling frustrated i can go home and vent to her and she's always willing you know to give me great advice mm-hmm. and she's always willing to help me out mm-hmm. like without her i would not have a restaurant that is 
100% sure. She's always pushed me. She's always seen something in me that I didn't see. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, yeah grateful. You know, yeah, and I and just saw something that I had a greater purpose than to be waiting tables and pushed me to in that direction. Was there anything intangible that maybe your wife or Derek or Tony or any of the mentors um, said to manage your expectations when you embarked on this brick and mortar journey? Yeah, I mean, they just, you know, told me to stay like focused on the pizza and just putting out the best product that you can and just treating people right, you know, yeah, yeah. and just being genuine, yeah. you know. And, and they always taught me that you're going to be constantly learning. There's going to be things that are always thrown your way and you have mm. to learn to adjust and adapt. And, mm. you know, pizza is not easy. You know, it's yeah. changing all the time. Right. It's, you got to be able to, like, adjust yes. and adapt, you know. so Which is good. We don't want to be yeah. stagnant anyway. Yeah, exactly. Uh, how did you land in Uptown? Like, were you looking for places that had a pizza oven or you know things that were maybe a pizzeria yeah, yeah. prior to I was looking to, for or? places that were already that a restaurant not cheap, yeah. you know and uptown and argyle I the rent was fairly cheap oh, nice. in okay. that space so I was like you know I didn't really think about it so I kind of just jumped on it okay and it had a hood and everything already. It, nice. We pretty much had to gut it, though. It was, oh, okay, okay. It's called Benny's Diner. It was really, really old. So we pretty much gutted. They gutted it, actually, and turned it into oh, a wow. white box. And then. Did you um, have to bring in a pizza oven? Yeah. Oh, well, wow. I mean, we don't. I don't use a pizza. I don't use a traditional pizza oven. I use a convection oven. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, like the, one of those double-stack convection oh, ovens yeah, yeah, with yeah. the grates and everything. Yeah. I don't have, like, a deck or oh, anything. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know many people that are using that. I know Five Squared uses the same style of oven, but other oh. than that, I don't know. Is that because you didn't even, did you ever try? No, I mean, I had to learn. So this is the story why I use the convection oven is when I went to Envision in Humble Park. Yeah. You know, I saw the hood there. I saw a convection oven, a regular stove. Yeah. Actually, there were two convection ovens, and I told the manager there, I'm like, hey, can I bring in my deck oven like a pizza oven? He's like, oh. no, nah, man. He's like, that. what's under that hood is what's going to be under that hood. I yeah. was like, if I want to make this work, I'm going to have to learn how to make pizzas in this convection uh, oven. Oh. So I had to basically learn how to do it in that convection oven, and it, it, kind of, it worked. You know, it took quite a while to, like, adjust and adapt to the oven, but... I, I guess, like, what, what were the adjustments? Was it longer time? Was it, like... No, what? it's actually, like, shorter, shorter time, time because it's circulating the air, and it's cooking oh. at, like, 25% hour. But the issue was is that the toppings don't cook all at the same rate so yeah that's one thing about my pizza that is very challenging is you can't just put the sauce in there put all the toppings on and throw it in the oven right. and then when it's done take it out and take it out you you like put some other toppings on after yeah well mid mid mid, bake, mid. okay you know so okay. like the pepperoni if you were to put that on in the beginning it's going to be charred and black by the time the pizza's ready to come I out. I see. So I have to pull, like, every pizza that I do, I have to pull it out three times, basically, to, I'm cu- to I'm get curious, it to at, look right. At this point in time, what number iteration do you feel like you're on since delivering door-to-door? Oh. I when would, you first started? My pizza's probably changed four or five times. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I started adding, you know, like I do a caramel, a, a ring of cheese around it. And okay. That, that, you know, I do that. I'm one, I think it tastes like cheesy bread, which I think is amazing. Oh, it's but the best. Basically, what I'm doing that for is just so I have a visual as to how far along the pizza's cooked. I see. You know, because I don't time anything. Um, I, and is the door uh, see through? Is it, is it yeah, glass? So you, can, you, can, yeah, you don't you have, have to, to open the door then. Well, I mean, I'm constantly opening, turning. Oh. You got to turn the pizzas oh. all the time to make sure they evenly cook. So, okay. Okay. You know, and you probably have six, seven going at one time. So you're constantly opening that door. So then have yeah. you, what's, what's the bottleneck at this point? What, 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 um, like is it number of ingredients? Whole, like, like, cause, um, or, or the number of like the amount of space you have to cook at the same time. Like what's the, yeah, I mean, right? it was very challenging when you had another restaurant in there and you're trying to work and you're trying to share the equipment mm. and they're working literally shoulder to shoulder alongside you. It became just too challenging. Sure. You know, and I also, the time constraints with the ghost kitchen there at humble, we were paying hourly. To be so there. yeah, oh, you wow. feel like as soon as you walk in the door, you're it's a race against the clock, you mm-hmm. know, and you're rushing and 
it's just not a relaxing environment because you're trying to save money by not mm, being mm. there as long, yep. cutting down on prep time, things like that. Right. So right. I was like, I need to get my own space. So okay, that's when I found the Uptown one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, when did you feel ready for a second location? I would say like a year and a half into it, we were pretty much outgrew the space. Okay. You know, it's a really small kitchen. Yeah. So I can only have so many fridges in there and we cold ferment our dough. So I found, you know, storing okay. ingredients okay. and we're running out of space. You know, that's why we make a limited amount. It's just, well, that's the, the most we can do, you know? So I was yeah. figuring, okay, you know. But, but were you considering... Um like moving to a different location or just having a second location either or yeah i mean i would love to, i mean I, I hear our students come from vernon hills sometimes indiana one year it was milwaukee yeah. uh and it makes me think like these people willing to travel this far what if i had another location but i don't think we're ready for that because what well, there are days that i'm not here at all it's like if i wanted more students i'll just keep this location overhead's expensive yeah i mean i knew the product was good yeah so I was actually looking in Milwaukee. I looked at several okay. spaces in oh, Milwaukee. Wow. I was thinking, I think this would be a real hit in Milwaukee. Yeah. You know, I think people would eat it up there. But right. just the traveling was so, so much that, you know, I was always scrolling through through um, commercial. Yeah. Re- le- and yes. I saw the place in Berwyn uh, that I'm currently at. Okay. It was for sale. Oh, nice. And I was like, wow, I cannot afford that. Oh. But I was like, I love that space. I would make an incredible pizzeria. Oh. So I kind of just forgot about it. And then I think a month later, I was scrolling through and then I saw it was for rent. I, Very yeah, interesting. They weren't able to sell it. So I called them up like that day and we met like a week later and at the space. And I. What, what, what about it was appealing just as, as a, a pizzeria? It was there for an Italian ice place for 46 years. Oh, wow. You know, it was like an old house that was converted. I just loved, I don't know, I had that retro feel. I always yes. try to get that retro feel, vintage feel, to did, pay homage to the pizzerias of the past. Did you ever visit Pizza Fried Chicken Ice Cream? Yeah. Now it's uh, uh, yeah. Henry Kai's uh, Three Little Pizza. Pigs. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, yeah. That, now it's 3LP, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, well, next to Maria's uh, yeah. in Bridgeport. Kimsky, or is that? Uh, they're part of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, that place is also kind of, I get homey vibes yeah. um, from there. Yeah. Uh, a little smaller of a space, but it. And even that space that they moved to in Westmont, mm. Kim's Uncle Pizza. Have mm-hmm. you seen that? I haven't visited yeah. yet. I yeah, but I mean, yet. it just has that vibe. Okay. You know, that okay. really cool vibe. That, okay. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, why Berwyn? Because it's yeah. kind of like out of the, you yeah. know. But I mean, my friend, he does he does sound. There's a coffee place okay. slash bar like two doors down. Yeah. So that's called Friendly. And then Fitzgerald's is a legendary music venue. Okay. And this is all in like, Berwyn? Yeah. And it's like right Very down the street. So I, I was like, that. that's a good. I used to work in Cicero. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense now. Uh, so then how, how has it been going? Are you, are you still, you said you're making all the pieces by yourself in Berwyn, but like, how is it, how is it being an educator now? Yeah. I mean, I find that to be the most challenging aspect of the job, Okay, you know, teaching people how to do the pizza yeah. and other aspects of the job, you know, taking orders, tracking orders, doing inventory. It's challenging. It's, it's it, incredibly, it, you, you feel f- further and further removed from the art yeah, of making pizza yeah. right but but if you do it right then you have a team that will that will put as much you know love and care into yeah. the process i guess i'm always concerned i just don't want to be that boss that's never really like hands-on yes know, and, well but, but i mean if i want I, I have to have the ability to bounce back and forth i yeah. can't just be stuck in one place so i did hire a guy he's going to be starting next week so He's going to be making the pizzas in mm. Berwyn to free me up to, to go back and forth because I want to be able to show my face in Uptown making pizzas as well, you mm. know, so. I can't imagine, like, it, you can't, there's no favorite, right? They're both your babies. Yeah. <laughs> like, for me, I just love making pizza. That's my favorite part of the job okay. is making the pizza. Yeah. You know, it's like my time to zen out and just focus on sure. nothing else. Sure. And not a lot of people get that to be able to focus on one thing and forget about everything else for a few hours a day is is pretty awesome. So. Um, is there a particular pizza that that really helps you zone out or are they are they all equally 
yeah, uh, zen like. Yeah, I only make one style of pizza. So, yeah. You know. Well, you, just yeah. so just different toppings. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I just came up with a new one that's really good with vodka sauce. It has everything bagel spice on there. Okay. <laughs> that's really. It's probably my favorite pizza that I've so, ever so made. So, are there seasonal? Menu items? Or no, are there, no, I just, okay. I'll try to come up with, you know, I mean, we've pretty much had the same style, the same, like, pizzas on the menu since, yeah. since opening, so. Uh, when you first came up with the concept, what, did you want it to be a tighter menu? Yeah, I mean, I just feel like offering, I we only offer one thing at our restaurant, and nothing yeah. else. Yeah. You know, I just think that's, I don't know. To be able to focus on one thing. To do, do to, something to really right, thing yeah. And try to do that the best you can. Yeah. You know, is what I wanted to do. What do you think? Uh, well, wait, how's how's Millie? What, what's up with like she, is, is she, Millie? Is Millie still around? No, she Millie's passed away quite. Uh, a while. Two thousand eight. <laughs> okay, a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. Tell t- so. Tell me, like, what? So she, you you used to cook t- together and like, but like, I can't imagine what she'd think right now. Yeah, yeah. Same with that. And then my dad passed away too, and that was a real inspiration for me to like push. Because that was kind of happening in that 2020. Oh, wow. You know, my dad passed away from a heart attack. He, oh, he survived wow. the heart attack, but he quickly declined. And, you know, I, my dad was like my hero. And he's a guy that always worked for himself. Sure. Like, he never sure. worked for anyone. He always had his own businesses. And I always admired that about him. And that's something I always wanted to do. So, well, and to you see know, you. And like, I wanted to, yeah. like, do a push before he, he got to see the very beginning of it. Oh, okay. You know, he lived in Florida. He never, But it was, like, right there. I started the business right before he passed away. For so sure. And I hope I made him proud. Oh, that, that was a, a like giant it. push for me to, like, take the leap to do it as well. And, and, and now, so it, th- there is, I used to have this theme, uh, because I was going through it myself of doing something to appease my parents, um, and to, to, to feel seen by them. Um, be, you just want to make them proud, but luckily I'm doing something I thoroughly enjoy as well, which sounds to be like, yeah. it to be the case with you as well. Like for me, I always felt like I was letting them down cause I wasn't meeting my full potential. Sure. You know, because I was floundering around waiting tables for 16 years, which I'm not saying is a bad career, but right, for right. me, it's like I always felt like, you know, I could do something yeah. more, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, so then what's the, what are the next steps for you then in 2024? Right now, I'm completely content. I'm, like I said, okay. I'm trying to hire a, a pizza maker. Okay over in Berwyn and yeah. I want to, you know, get him trained. That's going to take quite a while. And then to free myself up and, uh, not sure if I'll be remaining in uptown. My lease is up in about a year and a half. Okay. So I might be relocating yeah. that any, restaurant any to lessons, a larger space, larger space, any lessons yeah. that you've learned, um, as you try to look for another space then? Yeah. I mean, to look at the lease, I've, it's been incredibly challenging in uptown. Okay. You know, I'm not going to trash talk, but no. like it's it's a lot more than I ever thought it was going to be. So, uh, is it impossible to find s- leases that are not triple net, which means yeah, like you're, I mean, you're responsible for current, so much more? Yeah, than, the one that I'm in right now, I'm not. It's it's just oh, straight up. Okay, you know, I have to pay for utilities and the rent, which yeah. is amazing. Right. You know, and I'm trying to avoid triple net because right. it seems to me incredibly expensive, but. Yeah, there are. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm lucky I found this place. This place isn't triple net either. So, uh, you don't think about these things when you when you're like, I have this great idea. It's gonna be a business. All these hidden fees that like will will just start. And like, I was so excited to get my own brick and mortar (laughs) that I didn't really pay attention at least too close. I was just excited to get started and get open. So. Now, now, now that things pop up, it's like I'm responsible for everything yeah. that goes wrong. It seems, you know. Yeah. So. Um, has there been anyone that you've uh, admired or respected? And I'm sure there's so many, um, but I can't imagine like if, uh, let's say, Bert was able to come by Uptown or Berwyn and just like just hang and just try your pizza. Yeah, it'd be so intimidating. <laughs> I have no idea what he would say because he seemed like he was pretty straight to the point. So he, he, he seemed very in his YouTube videos like direct, but in a joking, in a so yeah, dry humor yeah, type kind of way. S- to me, he came across as a sweetheart. You know, yeah, self-deprecating and but like, yeah, I don't know mm-hmm. what, what he would say. 
you know, I would always res- would respect what I do, but there's so many pizza makers that I admire. Yeah. Not only in Chicago, but throughout the country, you know. And so. it, I get the sense that it's still, it's like friendly. It's friendly. It's all friendly. It's yeah. like there's, it's not too competitive. It's not too cutthroat. Yeah. I mean, we're all supportive of each Plenty other. Plenty of pie to go around. Yeah, right? exactly. You know? It's not like, it's not really a competition anymore. It's right. more like let's share what we know, our knowledge, and yeah, you know, help each other grow. Um, is it from birth that you got the pre-order model from? Uh, yeah, that and uh, another guy named uh, Badia out in Philadelphia. Okay. I saw he was on uh, Vice. They did a little special on him. Okay. And he was making 40 pizzas a day. I was like, that's a really cool. He had a small little pizza shop. Yeah. Making 40 pizzas a day. Call yeah. it a day when he's done. Compared like, to, if you have an idea, I, I wouldn't even know where to guess, but like compared to, let's say, uh, Pauly G's, like how many pizzas are they making a day? Hundreds? Oh, hundreds, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. assuming, yeah. So to limit... Right now, we're up to 60 a day 60, at each location, okay. so... 60. You know, um, combined, it's like 100, 120. Is, I'm curious, like, is that enough revenue to, to sustain yourself? Well, I mean, I that's the model's so small that, you know, I don't have a lot of staff. Right. You know, on the food cost. It's a really, a really good way to control every aspect, you know, yes. food cost. Right. You're not really throwing away product. Oh. Most of my employees are part time, so okay. you're not spending a lot on labor. So, yeah. You Benefits know, the, or anything the, like that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the spaces are so small. Yes. The rent's not that, that crazy. So, Okay. Yeah, you have a lot of control over. And and how mind blowing is it to consistently sell out of pre-orders? Yeah, I mean every day. And Berwin every day before we've even opened, we've sold out. That, you're so. that top of mind for people. Yeah. That like, I missed it last time. I got to get it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it blows my mind the support that people have shown me. And every day I wake up just feeling so grateful to get to make pizzas. And I guess. Uh, if it ever s- slows down, like, is there something that we can do or that you that you plan to do? To, I don't know, like, to, to re- how do you reinvigorate s- supply and demand, right? It's just like, yeah, how, do you, yeah. how do you... I mean, I hope that doesn't happen. I know, you know right? It's just, I, just, <laughs> I guess I'll have to figure it out when, it, when okay. and if it does happen. Okay, I okay. don't really have an answer for you. With a, uh, with a larger space... What would that allow you to do? Have more like customers inside, but more guests yeah, inside, for just sure. yeah, sit more down, dining, and everything. The Berwyn one is just pick up and delivery, you know. So okay, okay. There's no dining at all. We're not allowed to by the city, but oh. yeah, having a bigger space would be cool. So I am looking at one particular space, and it has a few more tables than the current space in Uptown, but not a lot. Do you do you see this becoming more than pizza? Um, like for example, like sometimes like Derek will host collaborations or events yeah, within I just the did space. One with Lynn's Pizza in Chicago. Okay, they're opening up a brick and mortar very soon. So okay, it was a really really cool thing that we did there. I'd love to have more pop ups at my space. Okay, you know, and help help people out like I, you know, right, like right, when I right. got started, you know. Yeah, uh, are there any other consumables that you want to eventually hold that you're not holding right now? Like yeah. beverages or other, well, other I offer soda, or, but or yeah, maybe, I don't know if I'm gonna ever what, offer what about alcohol. Little, oh yeah. no, okay, okay. Yeah. What about like appetizers or, or yeah, desserts may, or anything maybe. like that? Your dessert would be. I'm always looking <laughs> a little, little tiramisu, to, little. <laughs> yeah, I'm always trying to figure out a dessert, but yeah, okay. it's uh, you know, with our small staff and everything, we're so, it, it's a lot of prep work to prep these pizzas. So, well, I'm, I'm just curious if your mind ever goes there. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, like, yeah, well, it what, what could be the next iteration yeah, to this yeah. once we've nailed down, like, yeah. like fine tuned what we currently have? Like, what else could we do? Yeah. I mean, my, I, I would love to open another pizzeria that's not a Millie's and make a different style of pizza. Yeah. You know, and yeah. try to see what I can do with well, a different um, style. What have you been to Novel Pizza? No, I want to go really bad. So good. So good. So cool. good. Yeah. Um, and uh, have you met Francis? And and the team Ryan no, no? okay, no. Um, they're up, they're up in uh, Bowmansville uh, side practice uh, okay coffee, yeah, yeah, yeah like Foster and Damon nice um, yeah I've been to side practice but uh, yeah Novel's like five minutes away from here oh cool um, and, I, I love uh, the vibe of their their shop and yes. everything on the outside yeah it's really cool it's perfect um, yeah. what style would you like to try. Well, I mean, I was kind of messing around with it. I don't think anyone's doing it. It's called like South Shore Bar Pizza. Mm. So it's, think of a tavern pizza, but with a caramelized crust. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wild. <laughs> okay. You cook it in a pan. It's like super thin. 
Oh. Yeah, but it has a caramelized cheese crust on the very end of it. So oh. yeah, I was struggling trying to get it crispy. I yeah. mean, sometimes I would get it and sometimes it wouldn't be. Is it a different pan altogether? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's a much thinner pan. It's not okay. nearly as deep. But yeah, it's. That and you dock, so you dock the dough and everything. Docking means like putting holes in it so it can't like expand. Okay. So yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think I'd be one of the first if the only one to be doing that style of pizza are there any like hidden spots that serve really good pizza that people aren't talking about i love pats okay i don't know if is they that, get the that recognition o- if they, oak lawn or where, where's pats pats i believe is in ravenswood oh never mind okay i've never been i haven't been yeah I try to, yeah okay so good they make a tavern style pizza oh, it's like paper thin and it's like so good Wait, wait, is that the one on Lincoln? Pat's Restaurant. It might be. Yeah. Is that a sports bar? Yeah, yeah. No, it's not a sports bar. Not a sports bar? No. Like Foster and Lincoln? What's that place? That place, I wonder if that's Foster. Pat's. I don't. Pat's Restaurant. Is okay. What it's called. Oh, yeah. Green Awning? No. It, no? Okay. I that's think I'm thinking of something else. Okay. Yeah. Pat, I'll look it up. Um, what else? What else? <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to. I can't. I mean, I mentioned Robert's Pizza and yeah. Dough. That's one of my favorites. Five Square is one of my guys. Yep. Professor Pizza makes incredible pizza. Pauly G's. How do you how'd you come across um, Tony Gemignani? So I was struggling with some aspects of making the pan pizza. Okay. Especially, I didn't understand when I was putting it in the convection oven, it would start ballooning up and doming. Oh, wow. So then the saw, it was like a balloon almost. So the sauce would be going all the way to the edge. Wow. And I didn't understand why this was happening. I I really didn't know. And so I messaged him on Instagram saying, hey, I'm a pizza maker from Chicago. I'm struggling. Do you think I could pick your brain? And he's like, sure, give me a call. And we like set up a time. And I was like really incredibly nervous (laughs) dialing the phone to talk to him. But he he knew the answer before I even finished. (laughs) answering asking the question you yeah the answer easier said though yeah, than typing like it your out, dough's yeah. your dough's too cold you know okay because i we cold fermented and we pressed it in the pan we didn't let it sit in the pan long enough so okay that fixed the problem what is like, it now three hours it's like two yeah two sitting two, three. it sit, depends on the weather is it you know, uh, in the winter it's going to be a lot longer than the so, but room temp or yeah oh interesting yeah i don't have like a proofer or anything so wow yeah so in the winter but like and then we started Develop. I went out to San Francisco to check out his pizzeria. Nice. When he came to Chicago, he came with Professor Pizza to my spot. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. What? Uh, um, and at that at this time, was it when you were doing door to door? Is that when you came across this problem? No, no. Or was I it the, was ghost at the ghost kitchen? Right wow. When I, where I, when I started, yeah. So, you, but you you didn't have this problem prior to this. Well, I mean, I think it was the the summertime, so the dough wasn't. Oh, very, and, and it wasn't in as winter cold. time. It took a lot longer oh. for the dough to get warm. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What What were some issues that um, Derek helped you resolve? Well, he was more to kind of Big push picture. me to to open a brick and mortar. You very know, he cool. was kind of inspired me to take the next leap, take it from the ghost kitchen to... Well, I, to I wonder what he saw um, that f- had made him feel confident in this leap, for sure, in a brick and mortar. Yeah, he tried the pizza, and he said it was really good. So I don't know if he's like, I think you can do this, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, That's a good feeling. Yeah. That's a good feeling. Yeah, especially when someone of that caliber is telling you... Well, what was your experience you with Derek prior to that? Not Nothing, really. God yeah. damn, so gracious. Yeah, that, like that I dirt. said, like I don't, I just, I just, I didn't really know about That's much so about amazing. the pizza industry until That's so like five, amazing. five years ago. You know, so. Well, what was your um, community prior to pizza? No, I mean, I was just in the restaurant industry so, and the people so I'm wild. waiting tables with and hanging out with them and, you know, <laughs> yeah. It's surreal. Yeah, it's it's incredible. <laughs> like people don't really realize like the pizza community is it's like yeah. a family. It's pretty wild. There's conventions, there's pizza um, celebrities. <laughs> it's at this point is is there an entity, a group maybe for awards or um accolades or a person that you are hoping to be seen by? or validated by or like would just love to try like would have them love to try your 
pizza. Yeah. I, one of my favorite pizza makers is Anthony Mangieri. He's out in New York. Okay. I would, was he on Chef's Table? I feel like I feel, the name sounds familiar. Uh, that was... Mangieri. Hmm. He's from New York. Uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name. Yeah, I think the guy from Chef's Table is out in Arizona. Okay. But yeah. He, he kind of does a similar thing. He makes a Neapolitan-style pizza, but he makes yeah. every single one himself. He makes a limited amount, and okay. he's considered, like, the best. Interesting. Like, in the world. Okay. So, okay. Or one of them. Yeah. So, you know, I've tried reaching out to him several times, but I never get a reply on Instagram. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, that would be amazing. There's a... Uh, I don't know him by, by name or by person, but we've been in the DMs a couple times. Um, he has limited drops but he goes by Casaza. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think it makes him out of his apartment. Uh, right? Like yeah. and well, I remember yeah, we follow each other. first meeting Tony Scardino and like that he started in his apartment as yeah, well. Exactly. It's just like what advice would you give? I don't know if, and I don't know if he wants a brick and mortar one day, but like I don't know if there's any advice to give. I don't know. They they they're killing yeah, it and doing I mean, what they thing. It's just like Yeah, if you feel like you have a good product then just go for it. Yeah. You know, I wish I didn't wait as long, but I'm also glad that I kind of waited as long as I did. I was 40 when I started my brick and mortar. You yeah. Know? I don't think if I would have been young, I think I would have made a lot of mistakes, you know, and with spending or mm. not setting aside the money for taxes. I just like, I see, you know, and just being kind of foolish. So I'm glad I waited till I was like mature enough to, well, there's to different perspectives, yeah. right? There could be that one perspective where like, I wish I started sooner. So I can imagine how much further you'd be now. Yeah. But, you have this healthy perspective of like, exactly, well, I probably yeah. would have made a lot of mistakes, you know, as I, think I was Henry as I was Ford younger. said that you're not, you're, you shouldn't even open a business before you're 40 years old. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I don't, he, you're not mature enough, you know? Okay. So. Okay. Uh, is there anything else we haven't talked about or things that you want to manifest going forward, just kind of put out into the world? I just want to thank everyone for being supportive. Of, yeah. My pizza, it never in my wildest imaginations would I ever think that I would have one restaurant, let alone two restaurants that are yeah. doing quite well, well. So I guess along to, to relay it back to a work-life balance, it can easily become your life. Yeah. Um, how have you carved out time to spend with the family? Or friends, or, who, or yeah. yourself, you know? you know, just doing the best I can. You know, yeah. when you have a business, it's a seven day a week job. You yes. know, so I always try to set aside at least one day and to to spend time with my wife and go out and I'll shut everything down. I'll shut the system down. I'll shut the emails down, the phone mm -hmm. off. You know, just to be able to spend quality time and you know, and every night going home and just spending quality time talking with my wife how, how does how, how do you because i'm going through this right now um how do you plan for vacations i mean i haven't <laughs> been on vacation in a while we were just talking about that i'm like we need to go on vacation yeah. but yeah. right now i don't have the money i just spent all my like all my savings on opening a restaurant so right. i'm trying to right, pay off right. my debts there but oh boy yeah it's challenging <laughs> we're like i want to get off to like a date what's the last trip you took uh uh uh, maybe like a day or two day like a trip to nashville oh cool um gatlinburg uh for a, oh, wed nice. a wedding so oh, it was cool. like really there and back but we have two dogs that we have to plan ahead for oh, nice. to get what boarding kind of or a shepherd mix um, oh, so cool. staffordshire terrier uh and then a pointer mix nice. so they're like seven and six right now yeah we have a german shepherd yeah and it's yeah it's a lot <laughs> well and one of them's reactive so like they oh, you know okay. we, ha we have to you know that they have to ensure that they get along with other dogs. And if I, ideally I would have someone house it for us. So yeah. like they're in their home and that's a whole process. Yeah. Like um, getting someone to walk our dogs we, yeah. is incredible because he's so protective. As soon yes. as they walk in the house, he's going crazy. And it, it's, it's scary. It's that on top of finding a team you can trust to leave the business to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest challenge yeah. to any uh, any business, I think. You know, finding the right yeah. crew, you know? Yeah, it, like it, like I said earlier, it's like, how do you maintain consistency as you continue to grow in it without micromanaging? Yeah. Because if you can allow the team to have, I, I don't, and this isn't the only way to feel fulfillment, but like some level of creative input 
some ownership about the process, whether it's like how they interact with the consumers, maybe coming up with a salad of their pizza. I know Derek does this, uh, you know, maybe a seasonal, I don't know what, it's just like some level of ownership where a piece of them is in this process. Yeah, I mean, ideally, I would love to inspire all my guys to open their own pizzerias. That would be the greatest compliment to me is if they went on to do their own thing. You know, mm -hmm. that's what my hope is for everyone or mm -hmm. even another avenue, whatever they choose to be passionate about. I hope they take something away from me like, well, what, you know, what, I learned this here. What have you noticed amongst your team? Like when you when you're looking for help when when they're coming to interview, do you notice that they they want to stay in hospitality? Is this kind of like a like a seasonal temp job for them? Like what? Yeah, so it's a mix. You it's know, a mix? some okay. some people, yeah, they're and, just and, looking for something part time while they have a normal job. Okay. They, I, yeah, I'll wash dishes for a few hours a night. You know, yeah. But I got this other job, or I'm in a band, or I'm an actor, oh. or trying to get crack crack so into that field. This but, part time gig allows them the flexibility to yeah, do what oh, they yeah, want to yeah. do. But then I also need the guys that are passionate about pizza and hopefully right. want to open one. Yeah, a pizzeria someday. So yeah, it's a mix. Is there anything that you ask to tease that feeling out? Well, I just ask them, like, you know, are you? Pat? <laughs> I'm just super direct. <laughs> well, it's like, like it's oh. it's easy to say certain yeah, for things me, in an interview. I, right? I look for someone that's like detail oriented because oh. that's what it is. You know, every step along the way in pizza making counts. It matters. Yeah. Because yes. every little thing that you're doing can affect the end product. Yes. And if you're off on one of those aspects, it's, the pizza's not going to turn out right. You okay. know, so being detail oriented is like my main focus. You don't even have to have experience making pizza. Okay. In my eyes, if you're detail oriented and you're focused, you know, I'll hire you. you what, know? And what's the opportunity you. Uh, present to expose that attention to detail. Yeah, I mean, is it I like hope... an observational shift, or is it like yeah, yeah, like a like a stage. Okay, you know? okay, okay. I see. You know, yeah, like you know, you give like a thirty day, you know, and see how yeah. I, see how it's working out. You know, yeah, probation do you period. enjoy it? Right, I, right. Do I enjoy working with you? Because there aren't that many employees, so you really have to enjoy working with that person. Otherwise, right, right. You know, it's not a great environment to. To work well, at. is is culture something you think about a lot? Oh, for sure, yeah. Okay, and you it, know, I yeah, that's like one of the main things that I focus on. You know, I never want to like push my employees to work themselves to death to right to right. To, to to make my bottom line. Well, there's amazing. life outside you know? of yeah, work. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, that's why we're only open four hours a day. You right. Know? You know, and we close pretty early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think about work culture a lot. Okay. Especially for myself, I don't want to burn out. I don't want my employees to burn out either. Right, right. Yeah. Um, that's for now all I had, yeah. Robert. This was a pleasure. Yeah, this was amazing. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate um, it. Where can uh, people find you in person as well as online? Yeah, I'm at the Berwyn one every day. I basically okay. live there. So <laughs> if you ever want to say hi to me, just come when we're open. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, and Millie's Pizza Shy is our website if you okay. want to try our Is there two pizza. accounts for each location or just one? The it's same? under the same website. Under the same, okay. You just select. Which location? Very cool. And then at the moment, it's um, pre-orders online. Yeah, I mean, you can get a walk-in, especially in Uptown right now. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. There's some pizzas available. Oh, nice. So, yeah. <laughs> if you if you get lucky and you walk in, you can probably get one. Okay. Yeah. All right, everyone, give uh, give Robert a follow. Um, and uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye.